a day after the world commemorated World AIDS Day. Efforts to raise awareness, reduce new infection cases and eliminate HIV and AIDS related stigma continues at a pace. The HIV AIDS stigma exists around the world in a variety of forms, including ostracism, rejection, discrimination and avoidance of HIV infected people. Joining us to talk about World AIDS Day and other related issues is Gail Johnson, renowned HIV AIDS activist and founder of Nkosi's Haven Orphanage based here in Johannesburg. Thanks for joining us, Gail. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Gail, let's get straight into it. During mm. yesterday's uh, World AIDS Day event, Deputy President Sol Ramaphosa, you know, he highlighted the continued struggle of discrimination against people with HIV AIDS. What's your take on the sentiment? Look, there is a tr still a tremendous amount of discrimination. There's still the stigma. And I think part of that is, uh, what causes part of that is the denial. So you have denialism, stigmatization, and um, rejection and issues like that. It used to be a death sentence. It is no longer. It started as an well, a death sentence, numbers were dying left, right and center. We're asking people to try and change their, their original conception of this disease, that it's now chronic manageable. Now, speaking of their perceptions, would you say that society is responding positively to that message? To a certain extent, yes. But there is, there is still, the, you know, people being a sexually transmitted disease, which it is in this country, you know, it's not mainline. Um, the mother to child transmission figures are phenomenal. They've dropped. So it's a sexually transmitted disease in South Africa. And that allows people to point fingers and, and discriminate against, you know. It could take once, it could take 120 times, but it still allows people to judge. And I think that's part of the problem. Now, the discrimination of people living with HIV AIDS comes in different forms. You know, what about, you know, the relationship that employers have with the employees that are infected? Do you think that's coming down or it's on the rise? And also having access to things like life insurance? I think, I think in the workplace, it is a whole lot better. Um, and people have wellness workshops now and wellness clinics and, and that kind of thing. Insurance, a lot of them are advertising that you don't have to have an HIV test anymore. So I think in general there is an acceptance in certain arenas. I think in, in the township communities or the rural communities, I think we still have a huge problem. Now, government has punted a whole lot of interventions throughout the years. BY's condomize, the ABC. Do you think these interventions have worked or have they received the desired results? You know, our figures, um, Deputy President Sir Ramaphosa recently quoted a thousand new infections a day. <laughs> well, then one has to question if any message has been getting across. Because at the peak of the, of the pandemic, about, let's say, eight, nine, ten years ago, it was 1,700. So we only dropped by 700 people. So are we saying that only 700 people a day have got the message? Um, I think there's a carelessness. I think there's a recklessness about... Um, and, and please, I'm not a vestal virgin. Please understand that. I oh, should be so lucky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's a, a recklessness. But it's also now a chronic manageable disease and there's now medication. So why should I worry? I'm not going to die. So, so, so where's the problem there? How should we be educating people? Because you're saying, now that there's medication, people are saying, well, I don't have to worry about um, having protected sex because if I do get sick, I'll be protected. What should the message be now? Has it changed from BY's condomize and all that ABC stuff? I think we've got to do the full circle. You know, people and, and, and the world, I think, is AIDS um, fatigued. Yes. Um, and you know they 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 irritated they they uh, they've had enough of HIV AIDS issues, but we need it. We need to constantly punt because if you look at the rate of of teenage pregnancies in schools, no one's getting the message. Yes, because if don't getting tell pregnant, me it was a birth yeah. condom, because we've got a whole lot of little birth condoms running around South Africa. Now, let's look at the problem of people claiming to be able to cure the disease. Are we that arrogant or, I mean, ignorant rather? And, or is it just a question of us, you know, looking for that little bit of hope there? You know, because there are people selling that thing and people are buying into it and they're not taking their ARVs. They are still going to the so-called 
healers who will yeah. cure the disease? I think part of it is, is hope. I think part of it is tradition. Um, you know, if you've been brought up in a certain way and you've been in a certain culture, to accept a Western medication or is very difficult because you will first maybe consult the way you would have initially in, in, in the traditional healing sense of the word. And then to, to you know, you hear so many crazy stories yeah. still. Now, let's look at diabetes and hyperpressure. Those are also acute illnesses. Why can't we look at it the same way? Because no one really has stigma over someone with high blood pressure. I mean, you can so see it's someone... It's transmitted. So you're saying that the sexual it, element is what creates a huge stigma. Issue. I think it has a huge issue to do with it. So how do, how do we th then avoid that? Because the reality is people are having sex. People will always be having sex. So how do we then you know, change that around? I think we should stop judging. I think we should stop pointing a finger. Because for every finger I point, I've got three pointing back at me. Definitely. So let's stop judging. Let's just accept that if someone's infected, don't even ask how they got infected. Yes, it might have been... One sexual encounter, they might have had 6,000. Who are we to judge about the, the number of sexual encounters? The issue is the person is infected and we need to support where we can. Now, let's look at Nkosi Johnson and his legacy. Do you think that you know, his legacy is living on, being that he played such a huge role in terms of advocating for the rights of people with HIV AIDS and just you know, putting it out there that you can live and, and, and be a happy person without being um, you know, discriminated against? Shame, I miss the little guy. You know, um, of course he played a huge role. But you know, the one thing, he's never ever won a, an award in South Africa. Um, so was he, has he been acknowledged in South Africa as the little spokesperson he was against discrimination, as the spokesman for acceptance, non-judgmental, prevention of mother-to-child transmission? Uh, he played a role, no doubt about it. He played a huge role around acceptance because just in my immediate environment, just having Corsi next to me, people accepted him, mm. you know, and so it, it had a ripple effect. Um, I re look, yes, his legacy lives on. We do his work on a daily basis. He, we talk his name on a daily basis. But I just wish people would maybe take a little more responsibility, drop this thousand new infections a day, for God's sake. You know, let's just really do something constructive. Now, just finally, Gail, what's your ideal South Africa in this instance, in terms of how we as people, um, as government and other stakeholders, what should we be doing in terms of dealing with HIV AIDS? You know, as you said, we're never going to stop have people having sex and, you know, why should we? Um, but I think people should just stop and think, use, you know, condomize and think of your future. I think so many of us um, behave as though we have no future. Um, and maybe having a baby, uh, I've got a future, I've got a child now. N they don't seem to want to outset, step the, the line of poverty maybe, um, living, living in a squatter camp and, and things like that. So why not just have sex? I've got nothing else. We need to give people futures. We need to let them grab their future and think of their future, not just have a sexual encounter. A lot of our, our, our children, I think, crave physical attention and physical touch. And maybe they haven't had it for years. And they misinterpret that. They're misinterpreting the sexual act as a declaration of love. They're not. They get left holding the baby. And we need to, to maybe just make people feel whole again and, and give them something to work towards. And maybe, please God, a hell of a lot of infections would run. I don't know. No, that makes sense. Gail, thank you so much for your time and all the best with the work that you're doing. Thank you. Come and visit us sometime. I will. I Please will. Thanks do. for the invite. Okay. That was